on the barren coast. It is the morning of a day. All is quiet along the shore where the boats of Eskimo villagers lie beached above the tide. There is stillness over the village where the daily round of activity has yet to begin. But in this little dwelling, dug partly into the earth, one member of the household is already at her tasks. Ever the first to be up and dressed, mother busies herself just now trimming a seal oil lamp. She must see that the lamp burns brightly, for the house has no windows, and lamps are the only source of light. Asleep on a wooden platform nearby are the children of the household. Yotalan and her sister Anagaluk, Okhomi and his older brother Siluk, and little baby sister in the center. Father, too, is still asleep. Presently, all will have to get up, for breakfast will soon be ready. Mother has begun to prepare the fish that will be the main part of the meal. But before he is ready for breakfast, father also has tasks to perform. Putting on his coat or parka of many bird skins, he is warmly dressed for the weather outside. And now entering the narrow passageway that leads out to the doorway, he mounts the steps to the ground level above the floor of the house. Rounding the entrance tunnel, he climbs to the low roof of earth that covers the mound-shaped dwelling formed of sod and wood. He must see what kind of weather is in store. Carefully, he scans clouds and sky, for the weather will largely determine his activities for the day. Meanwhile, inside the dwelling, the children are getting dressed. Before they put on their boots, they prepare the pump grass that form an inner lining to help keep their feet dry and warm. The hood for the head is made of skins with a fringe of long fur. Now it is time for everyone to gather around the breakfast table. And here, as in every phase of life in the little Eskimo dwelling, there is much crowding together. For the family group includes grandpa and grandma too. Seal oil is ever on hand to be eaten with the fish and neither ever loses its appeal. Finding a choice morsel, mother hands it across to a Nagaluk. The Eskimos show deep affection for their children. And so the breakfast of food gathered from the sea starts the daily round. With breakfast over, mother and Anagaluk make a trip to a nearby pool on the tundra. Here they obtain fresh water for the household. And today, Anagaluk has a special reason for wanting an extra pail of water of her own. Back in the village, across the wide stretches of grassy tundra, there is someone she wishes to visit, a little friend who is ill. And since the father of her friend has said that water will do her good, little Anagaluk has felt that she could help. And so, to her friend in her sickness, she brings a cup of water. Helpfulness is a constant practice among both Eskimo children and grown-ups. Meanwhile, father and Siluk are busy on another venture. Having set out their fish nets, they have paddled their sealskin kayak to the shore across the bay. Nearby is another village where the family lives in the summer. And today, a special errand requires a visit. Walking along the shore, they spy a piece of driftwood. But someone else has claimed it by taking it from the water. Precious as all wood is here on the treeless island, this is left alone. It belongs to another. Ah, but here before them, another prize has drifted in, and this has not been claimed. Good material here for any number of uses. Part of the frame of a kayak, perhaps, or a new utensil for the home. A happy find in any case. And now, having set the wood aside, 
to be taken home upon their return, father and son proceed to the dwelling the family use in the summer. In the recent move to the winter village, some supplies were left behind, including a full container of seal oil that will be needed when present supplies are gone. Just as obtaining food is a major task for the men, work on handmade clothing takes much of the time of the women. Here, Yotalin and Anagaluk, along with grandmother and mother, busily ply their needles. Repairs have to be made on the hoods of parkas that will be in constant use during the cold months ahead. Grandmother works on a parka made of the skins of birds, while Yotalin is intent on fashioning a waterproof boot sole made of seal skin. And Hanagaluk, young as she is, is already learning the delicate skills all Eskimo women must know. Here, where clothing is long made out of materials fashioned by hand, all women folk must be trained in needlework. And the men, too, handicraft skills of their own. Today, grandfather sits in the Kajim, or village meeting house, carving an ivory ornament from a piece of walrus tusk. Many older men work at carving. But of all the tasks of the villagers, none are more important than those that are concerned with the food supply. Having put their sewing aside, mother and Yotalin are cleaning a catch of fish father and brother have caught. Nearby, along the shore, stand the racks where the fish are hung to dry. And to the strings of clean fish already hanging on the racks, mother adds those that she and Yotalin have prepared. Drying the fish in this way helps to preserve them, and fish are family's staff of life. But not all that these Eskimos use comes from the sea and the tundra. The village includes a trader's store, and here, Grandmother offers a hand-woven basket in exchange for some needles she wishes to obtain. And this product of a far-off world is only one of many the trader has to offer. Canned goods of various kinds, woolen blankets and yard goods, calico for dresses, flashlights, hardware, household implements, skis, and much to the delight of an Agaluk, the trader also has a supply of good stick candy. Yes, through the trader's store, the Eskimos have contact with a world they have never seen. And now with the trading completed, there is time for other diversions. Anagaluk runs to join a game of Ring Around a Rosie. The game is very popular, and Anagaluk and her friends play it often, along with games like London Bridge and Blind Man's Buck. For the boys, bows and arrows offer popular sport. But practice with the target isn't entirely play. As Seeluk takes careful aim before he speeds his arrow toward the homemade target, he is learning a valuable skill that he will often need. Practice in play trains him for serious work with the bird spear and throwing board used in hunting game. It is a skill learned as a boy that father calls upon today. Spying a waterfowl, he seizes his spear and deftly hurls it toward the bird that has failed to sense his approach. The spear, carefully aimed, has found its mark. As a skillful fisherman and hunter, father provides ample food for the family, summer and winter. In the evening, as mother prepares another meal, the bird that father has killed hangs in readiness. Perhaps baby sister knows that there will be something special on the table tonight. And there is something special later, too. A community dance in the Kajim. To the steady rhythm of the drums played by village musicians, father performs a tri- But he is not alone. Anagaluk and baby sister also try some steps, much to the amusement of the crowd. Yes, they laugh, Samoas, a warm and friendly laughter. They laugh and they dance when the tasks of the day are over. The long evening free enjoyment of friendship and dancing and music 
community house here in the eskimo on the remote island of